Have you ever pondered what life would be like without judgment? What your day would feel like without condemnation or an unkind word to oneself? What would the unfolding be? What joy would mm, extend forth to others if there was never an unkind thought, word, or deed? Kindness, higher compassion. It is all part of higher consciousness. When one extends kindness, from the purest place, meaning one's heart, one's very essence of who one is. Oh, the vibration on the planet changes. Love emits forth to the beauty of Mother Earth. It sounds so big, a loving heart. It sounds so big when we speak about vibration, for how could one's heart change the vibration of the planet? And we want to say, it is of grand truth that when one, from one's own inner essence, the brilliance of all they are, from their heart, from their soul, from the wisdom, when one extends compassion, deep compassion, deep understanding and kindness, the vibration of the planet changes. In the oneness, in the wholeness, sharing higher consciousness. We often speak about the outcome, if you will, when one causes harsh judgment upon oneself, upon another. When one speaks unkind words towards himself, towards another. There is, we want to say, damage created. Damage in one's heart, in one's being, it hurts. It hurts. For why would one condemn a miracle of creation? Why would one look upon themselves as less than? Less than what? When we speak about loving oneself, we do not speak about a love that allows one to feel better than another, meaning putting themselves above another. Feeling so grand in their presence, they belittle others. That is not what we speak of. We speak of a love so grand that each soul, each being, holds mm, loving light. There is not one above and there's not one below another. And it's not even like everyone is on the same sort of playing field, if you will. What it is, is oneness. What it is, is expansion of compassion of kindness. Each being bringing beauty to Mother Earth. Each wanting, if you will, a space to be one with Mother Earth. But where is the want? Where is the desire? It is a natural unfolding when ones arrive on Mother Earth almost taking ownership, if you will, as years pass along. 
being one with Mother Earth does not permit one to cause great damage. Being one with mm, the heavens, we're being very gentle in our language, does not permit one to feel superior than another. When we speak of oneness, we speak of oneness. We speak of wholeness, being whole in the oneness, not being less than in the oneness, being whole in the oneness, expanding forth the best of who one is. Now, ones will say, well, I don't know. I, I mess up all the time. I mess up. I mess up. I'm truly, I'm, I'm a mess. How can I be a miracle? My life is a mess. Oh, nothing feels like a miracle. And yet, ones are not looking deeper than that one sentence or two sentences, that thought. How can I be a miracle? Look at the mess around me. What does one have to do with the other? Truly think about it. What does one have to do with the other? understanding you are a miracle. You have come forth upon Mother Earth to share your love. Now many do not feel there is love to be shared. Many do not feel mm, the sense of worthiness to love or to be loved. Many don't feel their sense of worthiness to mm, embrace all the goodness, not feeling deserving of the goodness. And yet, if one ponders Mother Earth, truly ponders deep within, by thought, by mind, by soul, by heart, by experience, one would say, Mother Earth is a miracle. Just think about it. Think about what is presented to you each and every day. Presented to you, presented to all in the oneness. Sunrise, sunset. The moon sharing its loving wisdom in the eternal glow. Every star to wish upon. Just ponder the sun, the moon, the stars. And ask yourself if that's not a miracle. Ponder the vastness of the sky. Just ponder the different colors. Ponder what is shared. Pondered, ponder the gentle raindrop. Ponder the puffy, white, brilliant clouds floating by. Ponder the deepest, clearest blue sky. Ponder the rainbow. Ponder the hues of gray. Ponder the colors in the sunset. Ponder the brilliance and the colors in the sunrise. How could that not be a miracle? Now ponder the great oceans and the beautiful streams and the stillness of the lake. Ponder the waterfall. Ponder a rain puddle. Is it not a miracle? Ponder the mountains. Ponder the snow, the snowflake, the perfection. 
Ponder the gentle breeze. Ponder the trees. Ponder the flowers. Ponder the fruits and the vegetables. Ponder, is that not all miracles? And you have stepped forth literally to walk the earth, to walk the earth, to live among the oneness, live among the beauty, live among all creation, for you are creation of divine creation. Ponder the magnificence, ponder the miracles. So we are saying, we are sharing, we are suggesting, we are knowing, and it's not a suggestion, but it is a suggestion in a conversation for ones truly have to find the answer from within. When you ponder Mother Earth, Mother Nature, the brilliance of, the magnificence of, the color of, and all living creatures, all living things, if it is on Mother Earth, it is living. Talk about brilliance. Talk about magnificence. Talk about miracles. And ones will say, my life is a mess. I don't see a miracle. Ones are not paying attention. Ones are not taking the time to ponder the brilliance of creation. And ones, most ones, do not ponder that they are a magnificent creation of divine creations. They may have an understanding of, but they do not hold within the mm, knowing. For if one understood that they are a miracle, creating miracles among the miracles, think about it. Who would condemn? Who would one condemn? They would never condemn oneself and they would never condemn another. We speak of higher consciousness. We speak of becoming and expanding the love you hold within, the joy you hold within. Take a moment, if not many. Inhale a deep breath of Mother Earth. Have you ever pondered the inhale and the exhale? Would it not be a miracle? We are only scratching the obvious surface. When one thinks of their physical body, they naturally think of appearance. They naturally mm, lean towards appearance. That's where most of the condemning is, if you will, but then there's plenty of condemning how ones feel inside. Beating upon themselves day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. It all has an impact on the physical being. Taking its toll. Taking its toll on the physical being. Taking its toll on the mind, on the heart. Beating upon beating upon beating. Who beats upon a miracle? Ones that do not understand of one's own brilliance. So when we speak about cherishing, honoring one's physical body, body temple, if you will, have you ever pondered the beat of your heart? Truly pondered it? 
pondered every cell in your being, pondered the magnificence, pondered, pondered, pondered the brilliant apparatus, if you will, the physical body is. Do you have any idea of the healing that takes place? Do you have any idea the rejuvenation that takes place? Cells replenishing themselves. Blood vessels pulsating through the being. A miracle. A miracle. Have you ever thought about your nails growing, your hair growing? How does that work? How does it all work? A miracle. And yet ones beat upon themselves. Beat upon themselves usually regarding appearance or something that they feel is a flaw. Personality flaw, if you will, fill in the blank. Any flaw would be condemned, would it not? When one takes time to go on the grandest search of oneself, now ones will say, well, I know who I am. I know who I am. Hmm. If you know who you are, why are you speaking unkind words? If you know who you are, why would you ever condemn another? Why would you ever try and prove yourself? Think about it. When we say going on the search for the grandest treasure, what we are referring to is going on the search to the love that is held within underneath the layers of human experience underneath harsh judgment and condemnation. Now we do sound that we are repetitive, but it is so obvious to us. Where does one start to gain higher consciousness, to feel, to feel the love when one stops condemning any one thing. When one shows kindness right from the heart, not kindness because mm, your mother told you to be kind to the neighbor and you don't truly like the neighbor. That's not what we mean. We mean kindness from the heart. Genuine, authentic kindness given with genuine, authentic compassion. Love, genuine love, authentic love. Not I'm going to love hmm, something, fill in the blank, to have a response. If I love them, oh, they better love me back. And if they don't love me back, well, I'm not going to love them, really. Is that love? Is that love? Condition upon condition. I will only love you if you act this way, do this one thing, do these many things. I will show you love when you act according to my mm, long list of things that please me. Genuine love is infused with compassion and kindness. It is so natural, ones don't even ponder or think about it. It is one's authentic self, so much so they do not 
think about it. It is all that it is. Sounds like words of fluff. We understand that. How can I love someone if they have mm, betrayed me? Mm. How could you love someone if they betrayed you? How could you? Would it be possible to find forgiveness for the betrayal? and forgiving yourself because most when ones are betrayed they find a space to condemn themselves shouldn't have trusted shouldn't have listened shouldn't have even met them shouldn't have let them into my world shouldn't have given them the time of day should have seen it coming should have known better I should have known better ones start beating upon oneself and then they will certainly beat upon the other. All condemnation. All harsh judgment. Now we are not saying that ones walk around and mm, create spaces that truly hurt another, upset another, make another angry or cause heartache. But what we are saying is, love does not have to be conditional. In fact, the purest sense of love is unconditional. And so if someone, fill in the blank, has created a space where you do not feel love towards them, a natural response, if one has truly caused a space of hurt, destruction, unkindness, unpleasantness, fill it in, fill in the blank. But what if you looked at that one and you could see the layers? You could see the layers that cover one's inner brilliance. You could see that in their experience, how it would come about one would betray another. If you could truly go within the other and see what truly caused one to behave the way they did, fill in the blank, you would understand. Consciousness. You would understand the layers that cover one's brilliance. You would understand conditioning you would understand that one has probably condemned themselves enough that they're only living up to their own expectations. Or all through their childhood, they were condemned, being labeled for something, and then making a choice to live up to it, the life they know. You would see the layers. You would see the reasoning behind it. It's not allowing one to get off the hook. It's not allowing one to be mm, forgiven immediately. But it is an understanding that underneath the hurt and the heartache and the frustration and the anger and the tears is love. So if you could bring forth love to the upset, to the anger, to the anguish, to the harshness, to the turmoil, to the resentfulness, you could truly wash it away. You could. You could wash it away in using the metaphor of letting it go, releasing it. Now, it does not mean that mm, you have to remain around the one that has caused the turmoil. 
You do not have to remain in their presence, in their company, if you do not wish to. If you wish to, that is fine. But if one has, let us just say, hurt um, to the point where you do not feel that you could be around them, that does not mean that you cannot love them. What, ones will say. What are you talking about? This is a bunch of BS. If one has hurt me and betrayed me, I am not forgiving. I am not. I am not going to find love towards them. Hmm. And in that space, what are you bringing to oneself? What are you carrying? What are you carrying? in that space, mm. all things heavy, all things heavy. The space of forgiveness allows one to grow, to flourish, to expand, to be all they are meant to be. Forgiveness is for oneself, it is not for the other. Even if the other asks for forgiveness, it is not for the other. It is truly for oneself. It is truly for oneself. For even if there are, let's, let us just use an example of two people. One has truly caused a space of great hurt. And they have come to realize the hurt that they have caused, whatever it is, and they are deeply deeply sorry. If they could go back in time, they would change it all. Their heart hurts for what was created. And they go to the one that they have hurt and they ask for forgiveness. And they truly extend so much heartfelt love towards the one that was hurt. I am so deeply sorry. Is there a space that you can forgive me? Can you forgive me? And the one that was hurt or fill in the blank, the one that is suffering finds a space of deep forgiveness and they say, I forgive you. I forgive you. I have made mistakes in my lifetime. In fact, I've made many. And I've even mm, done something very similar to, then, uh, to what you have presented to me. I understand how it happened. I understand I hurt. I have deep heartache, but I understand. And I forgive you because I want to forgive you. Because forgiveness will set us both free. And the one, oh, feels relief. But for how long? How long does one feel relief for? Because there are times, not always, but the one asking for forgiveness has a very, very, very difficult time forgiving themselves over what they have caused and created. They have a hard time looking at the other who has extended the love and forgiveness, truly clearing a slate, truly forgetting about it even, never to have it spoken about again. And yet the one that delivered the space of hurt that asked for the forgiveness will spend their lifetime beating upon themselves. How could I do that to one I love? How could I have done that? Why was I not more mindful? Why would I do that? Why would I cause pain? And there are times they ask for forgiveness and then do not feel deserving of receiving it. They're wanting the forgiveness. They're wanting it and yet do not feel deserving of receiving it. Be mindful what you say to yourself. 
be mindful of the condemnation. You can see in this conversation how it happens, how it is difficult to get away from it. Ones are so wrapped up, they're not even aware of all the harsh judgment they place upon themselves and another or many others. This day, understand that you have come to walk on Mother Earth, to be one in the wholeness, in higher consciousness. If you want to understand your grand purpose, stand upon Mother Earth, look towards the vastness in the sky and see every miracle, feel every miracle in your being. See the miracle in everything. See the divine in everything. See the miracles that are presented each day, each day, each moment. A miracle is always presented to you if you look, if you feel, if you embrace, if you understand the oneness, you would see the miracle in all things. And when you embrace yourself, you would know and feel of the miracle that you are. That is higher consciousness. Ponder. Ponder the words, ponder the words. There is great love for you.